Hey friends, I was doing some stuff on my website recently. I was working on uh, upgrading my blog and my website uh, to .NET 8, and I was using uh, Copilot, you know, Visual Studio Copilot for some of the stuff, and I was noticing that I maybe was using it wrong, and there are different things beyond the basics, like the basics of what I uh, have learned uh, that I wanted to explore. So we'll see. I'm just kind of goofing around here, but it was interesting to me. So first, Let's pick myself up and I'll put me over here. So this is the source code for the Hansel Minutes blog. So that's that's uh, this blog right here. So take a look at my, my blog, rather, my podcast site. Take a look at it. It's a good show. Lots of cool people on the show. And uh, I upgraded it recently to .NET 8. And, uh, you know, you can see the commit number and the build number, what I, what I did. So when I am <clears throat> doing work like that, usually I'll, I'll go over here in the corner where I'm logged in to GitHub Copilot. You see where it says it's active. And I'll click on it and I'll say open chat window. And you can go in here and you can set like threads. So usually I have like a couple of things that I'm doing at a time. So I'll have named threads. I'll have, um, like one was migrating to from 6, .NET 6 to .NET 8. Uh, I've got one that's ongoing work I'm doing in Docker in for playwright tests. Another one was getting Azure DevOps to do some stuff that I wanted it to do. So you can go and say, create new thread, name the threads. And uh, then I was noticing that there is uh, slash commands. And slash commands are interesting. It's kind of like, if you remember, if you're old, if you remember like IRC and things like that, we can go like slash op uh, and or slash kick. So here you can say like slash doc or slash explain uh, with selected code. And that was really interesting. And then when I say selected code, that means that you would select this and say explain slash explain. Oops. Got two windows open here. And it's going to use the selected code to do that. And it actually says the selected code, which is cool because it reminds you that um, it can only see the pit of context that you want to give it. So it's explaining the whole process. This is usually how I interact with Copilot. I think it's the typical way people interact with large language models. You might be pasting your code into ChatGPT or using something like that. And around here somewhere, I've got my duck. I do rubber ducking. Where did my rubber duck go? So, because uh, I work for Microsoft, there's my Borg duck. So rubber duck debugging is when you call your friend and you want to brainstorm a problem with them. So the rubber duck, you just explain your problem. So rubber duck debugging is, I'm trying to convert uh, .NET 6 to .NET 8, da, 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 da. and then in the explaining, uh, the duck doesn't do anything. You explain it, and the in the explaining, your brain figures it out. I use... Copilot to rubber duck debug. I will brainstorm with it. Most people will ask it a basic question, and then if they don't like the answer, they kind of stop. Um, what I like to do is get a little more into it and, and get a little bit more conversational. So you build up context. So for example, let me move this off to the side and then I'll put myself over here. I might say something like, Cool, comma. Tell me more about the setup method. All right, so then it breaks that down, and I'm, you know, I'm talking to a duck in this context and giving it an idea of what I want to do. Is this modern, idiomatic, .NET? You know, do you think I might want to do something as I upgrade this to .NET 8? So it's like, yes, the code you have is quite modern and idiomatic, but there's always opportunities. So, you know, it's making suggestions about things that I could do. It's showing a before and after, whether or not it would benefit from HTTP3. So I, you know, I go back and forth. But <clears throat> this isn't necessarily intuitive. The whole, you know, chat with your, with your code thing isn't necessarily obvious. So you can get rid of that, just push it away and go back to the Visual Studio that, that you like. Um, but you could be in somewhere like this, and you can right-click and then do inline Copilot. So you see here this pink 
line just appeared. I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do that again. See those pink right there? That's saying that we're talking about this scope. We're not asking a question about everything. We're asking a question just about this thing here. And you could even go and say, well, hang on. I want to not talk about that. I want to talk about this file plus that. Are these tests affected by this setup? Right. So it says, yes, the Selenium tests are affected by the setup and the Playwright test because of the way it's using that server factory, right? So it, it literally walks me through it. And then it says, continue in the chat window. So there's no chat window over on the side there. There's just this chunk. There's this, um, this inline chat. And that's cool. And it gives me some suggested follow-ups and stuff like that. And it gets smarter as we go along. And then again, I have those same slash commands. I'm trying to zoom in on that. There we go. To show you those. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but there's stuff that I think people really aren't, aren't using. So let's go and look at something else. Let's find a chunk of code. Uh, uh, uh. Let's think about something. So this is cool. So like here would be like a, here, let's do get shows. That's more interesting. Okay, so get shows gets the shows out of the database. It's pretty, probably just not a good example because it's pretty not controversial. If I right click and do find all references, you can see that get shows uh, is used, you know, is referenced eight times throughout the application. So if I were gonna right click on it and hit rename, that would be a refactor. So that's gonna go and update all the references. Apparently I missed one. Nine references across four files. So if I called it get shows and mean it, it would go and update it everywhere. But then there's this sparkle button right here. And this is an opinion, but I feel like the industry hasn't decided yet what they want AI to mean. Is it sparkles? Is it a co-pilot logo? Is it a magic wand? Like, remember when um, you're doing uh, buckets and stuff and, 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 and selectors and eyedroppers in like Photoshop, there was a time when we hadn't all decided what the icon was that would do the thing. So now it's like there's the eyedropper tool or there's the magnifier glass tool or there's the 3D printed save floppy, you know, like the save floppy is like the thing that we remember. Uh, right now, the industry is still deciding what the, what the icon is that represents AI. So this is a button here next to rename that I would not click on because I don't think it's intuitive. What that's going to actually do is suggest, because large language models are good at that stuff, suggest, hey, you know, maybe this isn't the right name. Maybe it's load shows. Maybe it's fetch shows. And that's not a good example. Let's try one that's a little bit more, more hot. Um, let's try this one. Get sponsors for show. Yeah, so that's not really good. Let me find something that's more interesting because my code is not very, ha, huh, does Kevin Scott exist? That's a test that I have. Ha, ha, ha test for Kevin Scott's existence, right? So the idea being that if you've got crazy, long, insane um, uh, functions and you want to rename, you can go and ask it to like figure out, like maybe it's ensure correct website instead of test for correct website. And these are what they call delighters. They're just little things that are delightful. So rename suggestions. Not sure about the icon, but the idea that you're sprinkling a little bit of like, hey, that'll save you couple seconds here and there. That's cool. Um, let's try if I can make more tests like this one. Generate four more tests like this one. I don't know if that's enough information. We'll find out. Oh, cool. Okay. So, like, I'll accept that. And then it's generated a bunch more uh, Does search work part two. Does guest exist? Does category exist? Let's see if it compiles. Okay, so it compiles. Cool. <clears throat> so some, some generated stuff here. Let's then say that we were going to commit these changes. So I'll go over here. And we'll say... Uh, get changes. Now, see what I was mentioning about these icons? So here's a different icon. This one's a pen with a sparkle on it. 
save that. And it says it's generating the commit message. Again, the theory here is it's going to do something that is going to save me some time. Oh, wow. So this actually, I forgot. I've done a lot. <laughs> this is actually cool. So I've done a ton of work here. I thought it was just going to say added new tests. So this here would have been enough. But because I updated the Docker file that I was talking about earlier, changed the latest .NET hosting model, um, it has figured out all of the things. So that's actually pretty cool. It looked at the diff and generated a commit message. I would have missed that. I would have just righted, written the first one. So that's actually uh, impressive. I did not expect that. So again, icon notwithstanding, uh, a little a little delighter, a little delightful thing there. That's pretty cool. Um, let's let's do one. Let's break. Let's see if we can break a test. Let me break a test. I think I have some assertions. Yeah, six nine. Let's let's try this. I'm just totally brainstorming here. Uh, let's see if this test works. I'm going to right click, run tests. I'll bring the test runner over here, and I'll put myself off in the corner. Okay, so we just ran this test. Let me change it to a number that's wrong, and I'm going to just run that test again. You can see down there in the corner that test just failed because on this in my test data here uh, it expected 690 because that's what I asked the test to do and it actually got 694. Okay, <clears throat> so you can ask Copilot about that. See, so look at this. So this is cool. So here I'm not I'm invoking Copilot from the test runner. So it's analyze and fix test. So it's getting the context and it's saying, yeah, the assertion will fail because clearly this is wrong. It does not match the expected count of 690. So it figured it out right away. And again, what I really like about this, and I think it's cool because it's something that people who need to be doing in um, in AI generally, is say why. And by say why, I mean where did you look? Like, those are the references. And I think that's really cool. Um, all AI apps should not just say a thing. It shouldn't be like a miracle black box that you throw stuff at and then an answer comes out. It should say, well, given that I knew about these three things, this is what I came up with. And if maybe one of those is wrong, I could say, well, don't forget to look in this other file or whatever. It gives you a sense of why it did a thing and uh, how it could make it better in the future. So that's cool. Okay, so that is analyze and fix tests. So that was a right click on the test and then ask Copilot about it. So if a test fails, that's cool. Okay. Now let's um uh let's, uh, let's just make a we'll, let's, we'll make a make a bug on purpose here. Let's go and make shows null. So I'm gonna cause cause a bug here. So another thing I could do is I could go here and I could say, let's see. Insert, yeah, let's put me over. So another thing I could do, theoretically, I could right click here and say like insert breakpoint. But there's other breakpoints, right? A lot of people are used to hitting breakpoints. I, I know that F9 is the uh, breakpoint button. Uh, but there's also conditional breakpoints. There's temporary breakpoints. There's breakpoints that are dependent on stuff. This is all good stuff. People, nobody knows this stuff. You just, people, don't, people don't see the new features. They don't think about it. They don't explore. It's a bummer. Actually, pro tip, one of the things that I really, really, really like about Visual Studio right now is if you hit help and go to um, what's new, this page is hot. I love this whole thing. This is like the best thing. It's a complete list about like what's new in the release. And it comes up like this. So I like go through each one of these and look at them and see exactly what's going on. I think they're really cool. Um, so yeah, you can go help 
uh, and they'll go, what's new, and learn about that, which is cool. All right, let's go back. Um, let's say I was going to right-click, breakpoint, insert conditional breakpoint, and uh, like say I was going to say, uh, you know, like maybe shows, where shows is whatever. Look at this here. This is, yeah, see, that was cool. I just did it without asking. I love that. Check it out. Okay, so here's a condition. Okay, I'm going to come over here. It says where whatever is true. So I'm thinking, eh, where shows equals whatever. Look, just by clicking in there, it knows that I'm on that line. It knows I'm thinking about shows, not what I'm thinking about, but it's obvious from context. Copilots and large language models are all about context. It's got about that many lines of context to think about. So it's saying, all right, I'm going to go where shows is greater than 10. And Copilot, you know, guessed that and then saved that. So that happened right when I clicked conditions and then clicked in here. And then you see there's that sparkle again. So here we've seen that sparkle stars thing. So that's really cool. So that's a uh, breakpoint suggestion. So it's helping, you know. And those are just little delightful moments of, you know, delight. Uh, as you're kind of doing stuff. Okay, so I just put in shows equals null. We did that from before. So let's go and uh, run that test. This will probably uh, just throw an exception, so I'm not going to get anything here. Uh, let's try uh, debug tests. Okay, cool. So check this out. So it pops up a exception thrown. We've all seen this before null reference. Again, this is my opinion, inconsistencies. You've got, we've seen a sparkle, we've seen a sparkle pencil, we've seen a co-pilot little man, I don't know, Marvin the Martian, somebody, little co-pilot dude. Um, let's click ask co-pilot and check this out. And it says, this error happens because the shows variable is set to null. Da -da 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 -da. This might happen because the line Set the show variable in null, you tool. To fix this issue, you should probably remove the line that set shows to null. That's still pretty cool, right? So I think this has helped me to think about what it can do. Uh, remembering that it is statistical model, a large language model that is thinking about my code and code that it's seen like it. But I, I used to think about it as being chat. I can chat with the thing but there's rename suggestions. Uh, it'll suggest git commit messages, which is like the killer feature, because you saw that find changes that I hadn't even thought about yet to put into my commits, which is cool. Um, there's analyzing and fixing tests. Uh, there's breakpoints, conditional breakpoint suggestions, uh, looking at an exception and analyzing, you know, what's potentially going on, which is cool. Um, and, you know, just generally, like if the light bulb, kind of good tip, if the light bulb pops up, you might want to click on the light bulb because it's thinking about stuff. Uh, those things all matter, right? These little light bulbs are always trying to help you do things. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, put in the comments uh, if you've played with Copilot at all, what you found that it's good at, what you found that it's not good at. I think that if we, if we think it's just chat and that's how you interact, that's wrong. I think it's about a back and forth, like the rubber duck example. And it's about the little delightful things that know about the context. So I think of it as being like a friendly partner, a friendly intern who's, uh, who's helping me out. And I didn't even get into like actually code completion or any of that stuff. So this was, I didn't even realize that I'm looking at uh, co-pilot stuff that isn't just asking it to write code for me, which is another simplistic demo or simplistic way to look at it. So anyway, let me know in the comments uh, if you found anything cool uh, that is useful about it. And then uh, in other videos, I think I'm going to look at um, uh, continue.dev, which is lo a local open source uh, co-pilot in, uh, in air quotes, and uh, explore other things within Visual Studio that I may have actually missed. Catch you later.